to you all in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, we bless the Lord for this day and uh, will never stop or cease from giving thanks to Him. He's wonderful and is amazing. He has built a very strong tower of love when he manifested his love on the cross that we may know there's nothing stronger than his love towards humanity. But again, we take advantage of that very truth that if he's, he loved us, what does it mean to us? What does it have to do with our with our day-to-day -day life? What kind of life are we supposed to live in? Now I pray for you that indeed in the name of Jesus Christ you will, you will get to know by revelation his calling his riches in the saints and his power given to us in Jesus mighty name all you need is to acknowledge all you need is to acknowledge I pray that you acknowledge you acknowledge you acknowledge and you speak to yourself talk to yourself think meditate according to the very knowledge that God has and what he knows about you in Jesus mighty name we are where we are and who we are because of Christ we are defined by him he defines who man is that man is not an ordinary being rather is a union between God and man what Christ presented to us revealed to us was a different kind of man that God had in mind and that is man being deified that is so deep that's so powerful that's so strong to deify man and it's not an idea it is a fact what will surprise you is that we might argue on the point on, on whether it is true or not but on the side of God he has already done what he wanted to do we might delay in our arguments delay in catching up but the fact remains he has done it it is us who are supposed to pick, to acknowledge, to know, see, what exactly he did, what he did for us. We're so grateful to our Father. We're so grateful because he did it. See, this is the, this is always amazing. It, it amazes me, you know, we when you you don't acknowledge that you are where you were and the desire arises in you to go to a place where you you think is the best if you are where you're supposed to be and you don't know that you are where you're supposed to be definitely you will try to go where you think you're supposed to be but the truth is this is so hard and complicated 
because you cannot go where you are now. You cannot become what you, you cannot try to be what you are, but you can acknowledge who you are already. This is the key then. This is the key. The acknowledgement that you are where you are. You are, you are, for instance, the Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That is the highest place you can be. And if you're trying to get there, it will not help you to know to work because you're already there. So the acknowledgement is very, very crucial because it will spare you from all the unnecessary struggles. It will help you a lot. Do you know that people are struggling to become what they are? We shouldn't be struggling to become who we are. We should be having revelation that is now when where the word revelation kicks in comes in because without the revelation you might continue to see what you're seeing and it will not change anything until you discover until you have this revelation the man was standing the, the the bible tells us jacob was sleeping on a stone when he slept there he saw a ladder open he saw a vision and so the angels were descending and ascending. So when he woke up, he realized he was sleeping, and he's like, "Oh, I didn't know that I was sleeping in the, in the, the gate of heaven." So what happens is that you discover what you didn't know before. You discover, "Oh, I didn't know I am here." When Moses, when God appeared to Moses, he told him, "Remove your shoes, because where you're standing is a holy." ground is a holy place you see it's like he's acknowledged the holy place it's now a holy place it's already a holy place but you don't know so i am bringing an information to you that remove your shoes because where you're standing is a holy place so acknowledging where we are acknowledging what we have acknowledging what is going on is very very important so through this message of the gospel you will be able to acknowledge you'll be able to see what you already have. There's nothing new God is going to do. But once you discover what he's done, it will be new to you. You get it? It will be new. There's no new experience that God is about to give us. But you can experience what is already given to us from one level to another. And it is always new to you. And it's okay. Because it's your first time to experience such a thing, even if it was there. When people grow up and they give birth to children, when they give birth to children, it's their first experience to have a children, to have a child. But that does not mean that it wasn't existent. It was existent only that that very person had not experienced it. So it is new to him Whereas to others, it's not new. They have been experiencing that. So that is what we are saying. The fact that you have not experienced certain things, it's not that God is holding them from you. It is that you have not gotten to know that they are already there. You have not come to that place. You have not acknowledged it. By the time you acknowledge it, you will think it has just existed. Yes, to you, that experience will be the first time to experience it, but whatever you're experiencing has been there. You see now? That is why. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, it says, And that he died for all. We, we, we studied and read in chapter 14, and we discovered that we died. But then this next verse is so beautiful. It says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not Hence, henceforth live unto themselves. So when Jesus died, the purpose is that all that all they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Now I want you to understand what he's talking about. He's saying, of course, when one man died, all men died. So when Jesus Christ was crucified, we were crucified with him. And he died, we died with him. But then the, the, the mysteries that we live, 
You see, even Paul said, I was crucified with Christ, but I live. Nonetheless, I live. See, that, that I live is, the, is a kind of a paradox. Because if you died, you cannot live. But then he says, okay, if we, when someone dies, he cannot live when he's dead, right? But then if he lives, it means he resurrected. If he lives again, the person who dies and lives again, that very life is living again after his death is no longer an ordinary life. It is called a resurrected life. And that is a very rare experience. Even in the whole Bible, we had few people who were resurrecting. They were not resurrecting, they were resuscitating. Because there's a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. Resuscitation is the life coming back in the body and someone continues to live. As he was living, but you're subject to death. But resurrection means you are back to life, but you cannot go back to the grave. Death has no power over you. You cannot die again. So the meaning of resurrection actually is that the one who rises cannot die again. So what happened to others except Jesus and the church was resuscitation, not resurrection. So the truth about our resurrection, he is talking about our resurrection. If you die, you're gone. But if you talk about living after we know that you died, that means you, you, you came back to life. If you came to, back to life, it is called resurrection, right? So this is then what he's saying. I read again. And that he died for all that they which, for all that they which live should not be bent henceforth live unto themselves, should not henceforth live unto themselves. He says his purpose in dying for all was that men, while still in life, should cease to live for themselves. You have died, right? And you're gone. But then if you live today, and yet this death happened, you have experienced this death on the cross 2,000 years ago, it means that you cease to live for yourself. This is what is presenting to us. You cannot live under the old constraints, under the old limitations. You are, in other words, you resurrected into another life. You cannot, of course, be under the old law. Remember, the laws and regulations and limitations stops when you die, right? But then once you leave, you're not going to leave as if nothing happened. No, you will live not unto yourself. Brothers and sisters, dying on the cross with Christ produces living not unto ourselves. And living not out to ourselves is the greatest experience you can have because it means a life that goes beyond the human restrictions and limitations. We'll get to know more about this life which you live after you died. So after experiencing your death, there's another life which you begin to... So we are actually living another kind of life because we died with Jesus Christ. 